is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Weird News Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway. Brought to you by and presented on the GSMC Podcast Network to fulfill all of your podcasting needs. I am back, ladies and gentlemen. I, I apologize for my absence from you a couple days ago. I had the 2018 zombie flu that has been a raging epidemic all over the U.S. It's crazy. L- listen, I'm usually the type of person where I won't even front. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you right now. When I see people wearing those masks, right? when I see people wearing those masks and you know, the little, the little paper mask over their mouth and then you can still just see their eyes, the, the little surgery mask. When I, people, when I see people wearing those in like regular places, I'm like, really dude, really? That's so unnecessary. Are you serious? Really? You're really going to wear that right now? It's like when you see someone wearing sunglasses in a nightclub, like you're not performing. There's you don't need that, but, but I, for, I want to take this time to apologize for my 25 plus years of judging those people what wear those masks because that flu is no joke. I'm wearing one of those masks right now because I don't want any problems. I'm wearing one on my, one on my face. I'm wearing one on my hands. I'm wearing one on my eyes. I can't even see because better safe than sorry. Right? So, Hey, if you haven't had the flu yet, then go ahead and, um, go ahead and go, go ahead and get it. And then once you get it, you'll get over it and you'll be fine. Like I'm not even someone that gets sick all the time. I'm not like, I'm not like the, Oh my God, I'm sick every Thursday guy. You know, the person that just eats terribly and they're sick every Thursday. Like, are you sick again? Like what's happening with you? I don't know, bro. These, I just, what do you eat? Oh, I just, you know, just soda and nuggets. You eat soda and nuggets every day. Yeah, man. Just, you know, five, 20 nuggets for five bucks and a big root beer. Every day, yeah, man. Breakfast of champions. No, 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 no. Diet of diet of death. That's what it is. So, I'm not that guy. I I consider myself to be pretty healthy. I mean, I drink a lot of water daily, eat a bunch of fruit. However, I will not lie. I will be completely honest to you that with I did take a week off. I got a little got a little willy nilly after after the new year because I kind of prepped to be ready for the new year like in like September, I've been working on my body forever. So when the new year came, I didn't have to do some silly resolution. I was like, whatever, I'm good. I could take a little week off. Turns out the flu attacked me. It attacked me with a vengeance. And I felt it come on one day and I I knew what it was and I just had to accept it. I laid down Friday night. I began to die. Then Saturday, I woke up as a zombie from walking dead. They called me and was like, Hey, do you want to be in the next season? You look like you could be a good zombie. We could cast you. You got the whole look. You're moaning like one. You got the smell. We think you, we think you'd be a good fit. And I said, you know what? I appreciate the offer, but I'm not going to be a zombie long enough for this to happen to me. So I recovered. Everything was fine. People were like, Hey, you should drink juice and, and make sure you drink, take fluids and fruit. Thank you for referring. Thank you for recommending fluids because I'm sorry. I was busy just eating sand. So thank you for recommending that I eat, that I consume more fluids. Thank you for also recommending that I drink hot tea. Cause I was on the assumption that I should be drinking a whole bunch of cold milk. Like none of the stuff anyone recommends for the flu. It doesn't help. It doesn't. However, you have to get over your flu. Just, you just, you just get out. You do it in your own way. I feel like however your immune system is based, then that's how long it's going to take you to get over it. Like we're, we're all going to catch it, but you do your prepping for this like prior. That's why it only lasted three days because like I'm basically genetically superior versus if, if you may get it in the, you know, that might be your last, that might be your last week on earth. It can happen to you. So I'm letting you know now, if you do get the flu, then, you know, just, just, 
just handle it however the just go with the universe you know what i mean and this isn't this isn't to be morbid but you can't after your transmission blows out you can't put oil in your car that's all i'm saying that's so start taking care of your body now that's that's the that's the PSA within this. That's your PSA. Take care of your body right now. And that way, when the flu comes to attack, you can be like, oh, this is fine. It's only going to last a couple of days versus, oh, I've had this flu for two weeks because I've been there before and it feels terrible. Listen, on a lighter note, a Florida man. Yeah, I don't I'm not sure if like the people that are in charge of finding stories that are uncommon, if they frequent in Florida on purpose or if we as like a stack record label in the crew, we all find Florida stories to be funny because it's Florida. I don't, I don't know. But for some reason, whenever something weird happens, like even when I told you guys a couple weeks ago, the guy who called in reporting himself driving drunk, he was from Florida. The lady who climbed on the chimney, who killed herself looking for like, like the guy in the house. He was from Florida. I, I don't, and I don't, I don't really like picking on floor like this. Cause me personally, I like Florida, but, whatever so a man stole exotic fish from a florida pet shop now when i first saw this i was like okay like maybe the guy went in there stole like a huge fish and he ran out man i I felt like it was like a snatch and run y'all like something like that where maybe it was more what's the word like it was a improvisational robbery that's what i felt like it was so but then when i read in the story no like this was this was a this was a worldwide plot like this was a diabolical scheme put together by two people garcia cruz and his girlfriend erica they went inside of the shop they went inside the fish shop and then the girlfriend crystal started asking asking the lady all types of interesting questions like hey um random stuff lady said she started asking random stuff that didn't make any sense hey if i came in here on tuesday would you be here like uh yeah i work tuesdays okay hey if i had a fish and then i had a hamburger at the same time is there a possibility i can feed my fish my hamburger um no ma'am fish can't eat hamburgers okay well how many fish are here and the ladies really just answered all these questions for her because you know good customer service but while she's talking to this lady about just random things she can kind of see the guy like working kind of just working around or whatever kind of just getting it in like eye in the scene or whatnot the guy basically reaches in the tank and grabs the fish out of the tank and then puts him in his pants. He puts the fish in his pants, but let me make this clear. Not like the whole fish. So he had a bag and while his girlfriend distracted the young woman, he was scooping the fish out and then putting them in the bag. And then he, he, I I guess he thought that he was just going to be able to, to, I, I guess he didn't know what was what to do next so after you can see him on surveillance he's putting the fish inside the bag all willy-nilly like he works there like yeah having a good time yeah getting fish then he closes the bag up and doesn't have anywhere else to put it so guys in his pants and then what happens you want to know what happens next fine i'll tell you when i get back from break Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast presented on and by the GSMC Podcast Network to fulfill all of your podcast needs. I was telling you guys earlier about the couple, Bonnie and Clyde, basically, of of the pet store that went inside of the aquarium to go, not the aquarium, an aquarium store. They didn't, 
actually swim into an aquarium. They went to the aquarium store to go steal some fish. Now, the guy, he got done when while his girlfriend was distracting the clerk because this lady's just answering every crazy question that the person's asking them. Like, hey, do you know where I can get brownies at? Like, no, I don't know where. And she's just like, it's a real life cartoon. Like she's asked, hey, look over there. This is basically what happened. The girlfriend's like, hey, look over there. The clerk's like, where? And the lady, the other guy is filling this bag full of fish. I don't know why they needed so many fish, but this was the hustle. Apparently. Now, after he fills the bag up with fish, he has nowhere to put it. So he shoves the he shoves the bag of fish in his pants. Right. And then as him and his girlfriend are walking out the store, he points at the tank and says, hey, that's a really cool fish. The clerk looks at the tank and the guy runs away like he runs. He runs away with fish in his, with fish in his pants. <laughs> OK, so then the clerk, the clerk runs over to the tank and sees where they were at and sees droplets of water. Right. She sees droplets of water and. And she sees missing fish like she knows there's fish missing. Now, I don't <laughs> I don't know how many fish had to be stolen for her to notice her missing fish or if he just cleared the tank out. Like, I don't they, they don't tell me the story how many fish she took. I want to know because if you have a whole fish tank, right, there's a, a massive aquarium. So dozens of tanks and there's one tank and let's say there's five fish missing out of 20 fish. Can you tell? Five, I mean, that's twenty five percent. You can tell. Let's say there's five out of five out of like, I don't know, like four out of four out of twelve. I'm not sure. You see a bunch of tanks daily. She works. Maybe she could tell. I couldn't tell. But she walks up to the tank and immediately she's like, "There's fish missing." She runs outside. You know what this woman does? She gets the license plate on their car. She gets the license plate of their car and gets it to the te- gets it to the detectives. She deserves a raise. This woman is employee of the month. She's the real MVP. Listen, she got distracted by somebody. Someone stole fish. She went to the tank, saw droplets on the floor, was like, there's a fish missing. Then went outside, saw the car, wrote down the tag number and got it to the police. Really, dude? Really? Who? Here's the thing. I've seen and heard and read about snatch and runs thousands of times, thousands. I've, I can't, I can't count. I I couldn't count on one hand, the amount of time. Well, no, that means I have more than that. I can't name three times that I've heard of somebody writing off, doing all this invest, doing this type of investigation on their own. And then it working out. She got the numbers to the detectives and they arrested Garcia Jr. Arrested him. And they put him in jail. And then he got out on bond. Now, <laughs> I want to know. Okay. Now that I've told you guys this whole story, we need to figure out why this happened. Now, I know what, I know what some of you guys might be thinking. Some of you are thinking, okay, well, tropical fish, you could flip them, make some money. Because, you know, like, I'm... I used to be in the fish game a little bit. You know, I wasn't stealing them from stores because that's stupid, but I wasn't in the fish game a little bit, but I was in the freshwater fish game, not the saltwater fish game. For those of you that don't know, freshwater tropical, they require a heater. Saltwater, they require expensive saltwater tank. Like if you want to get a shark, you got to get a saltwater tank. You can't have a shark all willy nilly in your freshwater tank unless it's a freshwater. Look, I'm not going to get on all that, but you're probably thinking, okay, well, maybe they're going to flip a fish. No, 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 no. This wasn't a clownfish that costs like 80 bucks. This wasn't one of those fish that have all the little things coming out of its like body. Like one of the ones that like a jellyfish, like, but it's a fish. I forget what they're called. I think it's called a, I forget, but it looks like, you know what I'm talking about? It's a really ugly fish, but it looks really graceful. It's not even one of those. Those cost about a hundred dollars. These fish they were stealing were, were cichlids, like, basic electric blue cichlids they range from 18 to 20 dollars each they're not even expensive fish like so if you were going to steal these fish how much you're going to flip them for and they had one bag so let's say you guys stole five fish you stole five fish 
You stole a hundred dollars worth of fish, right? Who are you, who are you going to flip these to? And for how much you gonna flip them to somebody for $50 and there's not even a guarantee. I can't buy fish off the street. If, if I go to the store and buy a fish, right. And you say, okay, I get a guarantee. Cause I take it to my house. As long as my, as long as my tank is clean, if my fish doesn't last very long, then you got to cash me out. I need a refund. Cause if I take this fish home and it dies in three hours then Hey, Hey, I need my bread back. But if I buy a fish from somebody on the block and take the fish home, there's no warranty. You can't. Mm-mm. So that means you can't even sell them for half off. You got you got to take a loss on that sale. So you just stole a hundred dollars worth of fish. You're probably going to get, I don't know, twenty five dollars for all five fish. According to the report, the fish were never recovered. I wouldn't I wouldn't think I wouldn't think they would. I wouldn't think the fish would be recovered. I feel like they have. I feel like I don't think that if someone steals fish, that's something that you sit on. I don't feel like that's the type of situation or the type of commodity that you will wait till you have more of to sell. For example, I got really lucky one time. Well, one time my car got broken into and they stole my backpack and stole my computer. I got a call from the police a month later and said, hey, are you Ryan Holloway found your computer? I was like, where'd you find my computer? It was in the garage for stolen items. So some guy was breaking into a whole bunch of cars and then just stacking all the stuff up because I guess he was taking time to flip it. So I guess you sit on things like that. You sit on electronics because I don't know, like you sell them when you can sell them when you have time, whatever. But fish. No, you can't sit on fish. So for them to say, oh, and the, the, I, the fish was never recovered. Of course, it wasn't recovered. He sold them. And I, I just people just need to get jobs like because because, because here's the thing. I need you to start doing for any criminals out there listening to this. First of all, thank you for taking time from your shady activities to listen to me. But I need you to have like a risk versus reward type of analysis before you just run out and just go do something. What's the risk versus the reward? Like, even if this best case scenario, how does this go? Worst case scenario, how does this go? Worst case scenario, you get caught stealing fish on video and they put your picture right here. For stealing fish, a couple fish that's worth eighteen twenty five dollars. What's the best case scenario? You steal these fish and say you get two hundred bucks for them. I don't know why you would get two hundred bucks for one hundred dollars worth of fish, but that's the best case scenario. Other than that, like other than that, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what your malfunction is. Now, my my the most important question. This is the most important question of this whole thing of the whole thing. This guy, um, for, well, first of all, <laughs> first of all, they found Garcia, right? They found him and he's arrested. Apparently they can't find Crystal because I don't know. Crystal smart. Maybe Crystal's hiding the fish. Maybe Crystal went on the run with the fish. I don't know. Here's my question. I'm, I'm not, I'm not even going to get into how I'm not even going to get into like, get into how did they find how did she write down the tags and they found them. I'm not even going to get into you using your car to like commit a robbery. I'm not even going to get into any of that because you know, like whatever <laughs> I'm not getting into getting into that. Or why are you driving? I don't, I feel like if you rent, if you went to, if your plan was to go in there and steal some fish and then run out, I feel like you could have just ran away. Right? Like if you get in a car to drive off from something, I feel like the crime should be more expensive. Like if you need a car, there should be, there should be like levels to, cause for that, if you're snatching and running, like, I don't know, shouldn't you just run? Like you already have the bag of fish in your pants. Shouldn't you just run already? Just complete the task of running. I'm not sure. And did y'all park directly in front of the store? Like, how do you run out? And then the lady's able to just go to your car and write down your number. Listen, that's not even the important question, though. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm digressing, you guys. I want to know this. He's on bail. Who bailed him out? Who? Who? I need to know. Please, please tell me that it wasn't his parents. Because, yo, if, if your kids are out stealing fish, I need them to just sit in jail for a minute. I, I really do. Like, this, this is what needs to happen. I need them to just sit in jail for a minute. And I'm not a parent, but I know that if I got caught stealing fish, that my mom would just let me sit in jail for a minute. She'd be like, she'd be like, listen, stupid. Um, you're just going to be there tonight. Cause like no one's, 
you know what? You just you just you'll be there for the week. Just just sit there. Just sit there and think about this. Just think about it. Just think about what you've done. But mom, shut up. You stole fish. J- shut up. They weren't even cool fish. They they weren't even who are you stealing for? They can't even find Crystal. Where's she at? But mom, shut up. You stole fish. Just sit there. Because whoever bailed him out, they show mad love. Unless, unless the plot thickens. I'm going to tell you how as soon as I get back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA from the UFC, Invicta FC, Bellator, and one championship. We got the fights covered. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network to fulfill all of your podcasting needs with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway. I'm going to conclude the Great Fish Conspiracy for you guys. I'm going to wrap this up right now. Check this out. This is what happened. This is my theory, right? We don't know where Crystal's at, and the fish have not been found we do not know but we do know garcia got bailed out you know what this means have you guys ever seen jackie brown hmm it's a movie with samuel L. jackson and pam greer and chris tucker robert De Niro's in it and basically what happens is samuel L. jackson he has these people that move drugs for him and what he does is he if they get caught he bails them out and then he kills them so I, maybe maybe Garcia got bailed out because the fish lord who's ever in charge of the whole conspiracy doesn't want him talking. That's why we can't find Crystal because mm, mm, she went on the run because she already she already knows what kind of trouble is going to happen if the fish lord finds out that Garcia got caught. But Garcia got bailed out. So only thing that's going to happen next is the fish lords are coming because there's nobody in their right mind that would bail somebody out after getting caught stealing fish from a fish store on video nobody would do that nobody whoever's in charge of you is tripping if they bailed you out for that because even from what i read it says it says that Garcia and Crystal have multiple petty theft charges from the past. So for them to get bailed out this time, nobody, nobody's parents gonna, nobody's parents gonna bail them out ten times. No, mm-mm. no, no, it's not gonna happen. Mm-mm. So who bailed them out? Fish Lord bailed them out. So hey, I was saying earlier today, if the universe comes a calling to give you the flu, just accept the flu. And when the fish lord comes calling for you to go sleep with the fishes because you got caught slipping and couldn't complete the task of stealing five fish successfully because you chose to use your mama's car and they're able to find where you live based on the license plate information, then you got to just you got to just accept what the fish lord is going to bring you with that. I have a question for you guys. Um, I was watching this show called Black Mirror on Netflix, and it's an incredible show. If you like the Twilight, the Twilight Zone, you should definitely check it out. It's great. It's basically science fiction um, with technology, and it's just outrageous. The first episode, oddly, it I don't I don't know. You should check it out. But in the first episode, the prime minister, a princess gets kidnapped, right, and the person that kidnapped the princess says he'll let the prince, he's going to kill the princess unless the prime minister has sexual intercourse with the pig on television live in front of everybody live, live. Right. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. There's no way. So they try to get like a green screen and get like a guy and have the face of the prime minister and the hostage, uh, the hostage keeper or whatever the guy 
who, who stole the princess, cuts off her finger and sends it to him and says, yo, check this out. I told you guys no trickery. Here's her finger. If you guys don't do this the right way, then I'm going to basically kill her. So what ends up happening? If you haven't watched the show, I'm sorry, but the prime minister has sex with the pig and they let the princess go. It's a lot more dramatic than that. A lot more. Dramatic. But I'm, I'm just but I want to know, though, right, if all of us knew of a situation, because it's like in the beginning of the episode, they're like, yo, you can't. He, and he's looking around after the threat because the princess reads the letter and says, hey, have sex with this pig, blah, 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 or they'll kill me, blah, 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 blah. And like he's looking like, no, but everyone else is looking around like, well, you may have to. And he's like, that's absolutely you guys aren't thinking I'm going to re- really get to do that. Right. And then he ends up doing it, right? But here's the issue. This was all over. This was like all over the world, all over the world. And the YouTube video got uploaded and all this stuff. And it makes you ask yourself, and this is like deep, deep, deep in the future, right? It makes you ask yourself, not even deep in the future, like you're, I don't know, uh, you're 20. Let's, let's say, let's say 28. Let's say 2,800. Let's say that. And so I just said 800 years is not long from now. Wow. <laughs> okay. So like imagine, so when they say things like, Hey, we have a hostage situation. We need you to give us this much money to let this person go. We never really know about it. Right. Because they don't really look, they don't really release that information to us. But what if somebody got kidnapped, somebody that everyone cares about? And of course they did this in Europe because they have like princesses and Kings and all that over there. But what if somebody like beloved in Hollywood got kidnapped that everyone loves and they said, Hey, for us to like, let this person go. One of your leaders, they say, let's say they call out a leader. I'm not going to say any names. They call a leader and say, you have to have sex with this pig on television or else we're going to kill this person live on video. What it sounds like you say, no, of course not. But really though, Really? Do we just have someone just get murdered on television because you won't lower your standards and have sex with an animal? It's crazy, right? It's so crazy. So I'm watching the show and I'm like, there's no way this guy's going to do it. And he does it. But then after they let the princess go, the guy's approval rating is up like 3%. And it's, it's just a really deep episode. You guys should really watch the show. But it just had me thinking because when everything's televised and so much of things that we do are judged by other people and approval ratings and likes and video shares and all these things and the internet is just the internet runs everything now can you imagine like in the future how things would look if if like yo this person's massively important we have to save we have to save their life we have to do it they say we don't they say we don't like negotiate with terrorists but yeah yeah that's there's a there's a thin line so i will watch the show if i was you guys that's that's why the part of this episode is called sex with the pig because I just want to know. I want to know what would happen. I'm not going to do it. Like, I'm not going to do it at all. It would just be interesting for like a leader, someone that was like in charge of opinion leading. If like this act seems so minuscule on the grand scheme of like someone killing a child on television, the princess at the time was like, I don't know, like 12. Right. It's not like she was like 30. She's 12. She's 12. And this man has to like do this with this pig. So kill a 12 year old on television or like really those are your options oh my god anyway the best history for you guys is this did you know that um in ancient egypt like upon dying pharaohs were sealed into their tombs alongside with their servants pets and concubines a concubine is basically um an escort or like a side wife or side piece whatever so you got your side piece you got your pets and you got your living servants and You're dead, but all those people, they have to go on this thing with you so that when you die, they go with you to wherever, to heaven or whatever. Really? God. I mean, I guess it'd be cool to be a servant like at the Pharaoh's house. Like it'd be a cool job in the beginning. But so this is the thing. You're a servant at the Pharaoh's house, right? Or you got to be outside building those pyramids and moving blocks around. So... I mean, those, but if you're moving the blocks around, you may die and you move blocks around forever. But when you die, you die. And that's cool. But if you're a servant, you live the good life as a servant. But then when it's, but then when the Pharaoh dies, you get locked in a hole just forever. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Seems like, I mean, honestly, 
I'll go work for the Pharaoh because I could, I, I could be a living servant. And then when it's time for me to die, at least I'll be chilling with the pets and concubines. I won't be out there moving those bricks, trying to build a pyramid. So yeah, that's the food for thought for you guys. If you're, if you're about to go, you're about to kick the bucket. Um, don't take anyone living with you. Cause that's rude and selfish. That's the message of the day. With all that, I thank you for joining me for another tremendous, amazing, outstanding episode of the GSMC Weird News Podcast presented on and by the GSMC Podcast Network to fulfill all of your podcasts and needs. Live long, prosper, watch for potholes.